Hey, I'm Ben, one of the chefs from Sorted Food, and today I'm going to show you how to make pizza. Pizza you can make at home that is incredible and absolutely delicious. Chances are you haven't got a pizza oven at home, we haven't got a pizza oven at home. So this is something you can do that gets so close to that restaurant quality, but is easy. I've got Mike here behind the camera as well. He's a normal. In case I get too chefy, he's going to keep me on the reins. Both recipes are super easy, and actually neither need a recipe. <laughs> In, let's do the dough. The same dough for both versions. It needs five three as a ratio. Five parts flour, three parts liquid. So first up the flour. 500 grams to keep it easy. What flour are you using? Uh, so this is a strong white flour. Uh, you could use double zero, like a, a pasta pizza kind of flour, but you do want something that's got some gluten in it because that's going to give you a nice stretchy, elasticy dough. I'm going to season it now by putting a teaspoon of salt in one corner of the bowl, a teaspoon of sugar in another corner of the bowl, and one sachet of fast action yeast, in the UK that's seven grams, in another corner of the bowl. And I know what you're going to say in the comments, round bowls don't have corners. I know. <laughs> now the reason we do that is that you don't really want the yeast and the salt to touch immediately. Once it's all mixed into the dough it's fine, but you want to keep them separate. So salt, sugar, yeast in. And then we're going to add in your three parts of water. And the water is warm, body temperature. Five parts flour, in this case 500 grams. Three parts warm water, 300 grams. And then mix it together. I just use a table knife before getting my hands in there because it's just a little bit easier. This is mixing the salt, mixing the sugar, mixing the yeast, and eventually it comes together. I've already brought in maths with ratios, but it's really easy, five, three. Now for the science of yeast. Yeast needs four things. It needs water, which we've given it. Food, in the form of sugar. There's natural sugars and starches in the flour. We've also added that little bit just to kickstart it. It needs temperature, nice warm temperature, which is why we started off with the warm water. And then it needs time. And this is where you have two options. No knead dough, that can go into a fridge covered Overnight, well I say overnight, you're not going to have it for breakfast, so for about 18 hours for lunch or dinner the next day. You don't need to knead it. You're giving it a lower temperature, but more time. When you were tucking yourself up into bed last night, I was making a homogenous dough. And this I then put in the fridge, uh, so this is a bowl from home. But that's what it looks like. So it has doubled in size. What it means is you get a much deeper flavour and a better ferment, but no knead. And if I show you this now, but you can see just how elastic -y and stretchy it is. And the reason being, rather than kneading it by hand, as big as my muscles are, there are over 100 billion yeast cells that have been at a microscopic level kneading this for 19 hours. So you're stretching the gluten for much longer at a much lower temperature, and this is still cold but you've still got a wonderful dough to work with. If you haven't got the time to wait overnight or you haven't been that prepared, then all you need to do is take the same dough we just made and put in some elbow grease. So flour up a work surface and give it a knead, about 10 minutes. And while I'm doing this, I just want to say, we are super lucky in London because we have got excellent pizza on our doorstep. This is going to be the best version that you can make at home with the least effort and never needing to remember a recipe. Knead it until it's soft, elastic-y, feels a bit like Play-Doh. If you've got a stand mixer with a dough hook, use that, probably about five minutes. Have you done that on purpose? I love pizza. <laughs> Go on, you know the song. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, let's amore. You now have a wonderful soft dough. Place it into a bowl, cover it with a tea towel, and after an hour, at room temperature, when I say room temperature, I mean UK room temperature. Might take less if it's warmer. You end up with a nice Ooh. puffed up dough. So that oh. is beautiful. So the same dough, you've got two options. In the fridge, overnight, or 18, 20 hours, or room temperature, with a good knead, for an hour. But either way, you get incredible, stretchy, gorgeous pizza dough. And if you hold it up to the light, you should even be able to see through it. That's my finger. Thanks. Right, should we make pizza? Yes. And now this is my favourite cheat for awesome pizza at home. You need to try and replicate the fierce cooking of a pizza oven. So get yourself a pan and whack it on a really hot heat 
so it is practically smoking hot. Do that while you're rolling out your dough. Let's go with our overnight dough. What you want is about a handful. Now, I appreciate I've got quite small hands, but what you want to do is roll it quite thin so that it will cover the bottom and sides of your frying pan. So if you think about the size of your frying pan and then go in to about a third of that and that's kind of the ball size you want because you're going to go out. Roll it out or press it out on a floured surface Use more of the flour you use to make the dough, or if you've got it, semolina. It just gives you an extra bit of crunch to the base of your pizza. Now, because it's nice and elastic, I'm not even gonna necessarily need a rolling pin. You're just kind of pulling and twisting, pulling and twisting, pulling and twisting, pushing out from the middle, and it's not gonna stick to the table because you've got it floured, but you do want it thin because you want it to cook quick. See how stretchy that is? It's so stretchy and I haven't needed that at all. Because this is gonna cook nice and quick, the other thing to think about is your toppings. Make sure that all of your toppings are pretty much already cooked. No going and putting on raw peppers or raw chicken or anything like that. Try and get all your ingredients pre-cooked or use ingredients that don't need cooking. Very thinly sliced onion and then maybe crack an egg on the top when it goes under the grill. Today, I've got tomato sauce, that's a passata tomato, just with some herbs through it. Nduya for some incredible spicy smoked paprika and garlic oils that are going to come out of that, but it's already cooked. Very thinly sliced red onion, doesn't need cooking, but it's thin enough that it's not going to be too crunchy. Some mushrooms, they are cooked, and double cheese, parmesan, and pizza mozzarella, so not the buffalo that's really watery and delicious on salads, but one that's a little bit firmer for your pizza. Now your dough's rolled out, your ingredients are ready, and your pan is screaming hot, and your grill is preheated. You wanna work swiftly, but carefully, because everything's really hot. So, you're gonna pick up your dough and lay it into your pan, all on the bottom and a bit up the side. Tomato sauce, some, but actually, you don't want to go too heavy. You don't want this too saucy. This is not a deep dish kind of pie-like pizza. Parmesan. Some of this gorgeous ndia. It's quite spicy. It releases loads of gorgeous oils. You just buy that sort of next to the chorizo. Yeah, you can actually get it in jars. It's more like a paste. It's almost like a meat pate. Mushrooms. I think fungi on the pizza is one of my favourites. I agree. A little bit of red onion for some crunch, but it's so fine that it's not too fiery. Mozzarella, it's a bit drier, which is why you can grate it. It melts really well, doesn't it? But it pizza. does melt and it will give you a nice cheese pull. Just before it goes under a grill, a little drizzle of oil. Crack of black pepper. Because the pan was searingly hot, it's already cooking around there. And then that goes under your really hot grill for another few minutes, two or three, until hopefully you're blistering the crust around the edge and the cheese is bubbling. Pizza. Oh, hello. That's all right, isn't it? Bubbling wow. away, crispy. Because the yeast is puffed up, you've got these little bubbles that have gone crispy, and we'll see in a minute, but hopefully a crispy bottom too. Some fresh basil, more fresh Parmesan. Mike, look at this. Like, so two things I love about frying pan pizza. As you're grating in the parmesan, some of it catches on the side of the pan, on the side of the dough, which is why you get these crispy bits of cheese, the best bits of a grilled cheese sandwich. And because it's screaming hot, the base is like it's come off a pizza stone. And yet you've done it at home. It's 5-3 ratio, any toppings you like, frying pan, under the grill, it cooks in five minutes and whether it's an hour, an hour and a half of proving with a good need, or overnight with no need, you cannot get it wrong. The awesome thing about this is it is one of the easiest and tastiest pizzas you'll be able to do at home. Whether you're doing the overnight dough or the quick dough, it's exactly the same method in the frying pan. But this is just one way of doing it. As you know, Sorted is a community all about sharing tips, 
tricks, advice, hacks. How would you have done this differently? Different toppings, maybe flavors in the dough. Comment down below and let us know. And as always, join in the conversation over on Twitter. And as if that's not enough, right now we've got a bunch of blogs to upskill everyone in the kitchen. So you can go and check those out too. Right, do you want to slice, Mike? Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Ooh, I can do ya. It's got a kick, but it's phenomenal. I'm chuffed with the crust and all the air bubbles in there. That is great. <laughs>